Klaus Bissenbach, director of the MoMA here in New York City. I met Klaus the first time I saw him in person. I encountered him walking um, right on uh, 23rd Street and 10th Avenue while I was exposing these large-scale uh, uh, works you know, on paper uh, taped up against the uh, Empire Diner uh, that it was closed, it remained closed for a year or so and I utilized that space um, to make, my, make myself uh, visible and present in, in the community in, in, in Chelsea, in the neighborhood. So, that particular day I had a, um, a meeting with a collector that he wanted to buy um, one of my works and so basically how this would work for me, uh, people from the neighborhood uh, would get used to my, my presence and to my works and then they would approach me and start asking me questions about the framing and about me and really uh, relating themselves with, you know, uh, with my works in, in, in a very positive um, manner. So this art collector, uh, that particular day, wanted to buy one of my works. And he did buy it, and then he invited me to his, uh, his, uh, his uh, townhouse, beautiful uh, three-story apartment building uh, on Leroy and Hudson Street. And, um, and the piece that he got from me was pretty big. It's art collections that between him and his wife, uh, they were pretty serious about what they have gathered throughout the years. Uh, beautiful collection. Very personal and, and very serious collection. So I felt um, very flattered and even more than flattered to give me even more confidence to keep doing what I was doing. Um, in the long run, that could help uh, an artist platform by giving away pieces that. Uh, should have been sold for fifty, hundred thousand dollars, and you are selling those same works for um, a fraction of that, and and people know that. People who know that. People who understand it and 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 and, and live through those kind of uh, circles, know and understand them very well. Uh, pretty much of uh, how to get what they really want. So it, it's a catch-22 in terms of um, uh, acquiring, knowing that your work is going to be in a beautiful house, a beautiful home, versus the fact that you are uh, technically and conceptually, you are devaluing yourself. And that was something that I had to uh, deal with uh, a very close range. And obviously uh, affects you in, in many ways, uh, personally, emotionally. Um, but you, but, the, but at the end of the day, it was me making that choice. So it, it, it was totally fine. 
so anyway, so that particular day, uh, Klaus walks by and he literally, I was standing, I guess the way it works. I'm sorry, I was standing right in front of my works. So he passes me by without really paying much attention until he sees my work, the large work. And it was a beautiful piece. And he makes literally in front of me, he makes a 360. <laughs> um, and his eyes open up in such a beautiful manner of surprise and not understanding what was going on, kind of like, you know, entering the twilight zone of how a work with such a level was being displayed in the streets. Which that was usually sometimes what I would get from, from my clients. Um, some people would think that you know, it's a hidden camera or something. They would always say, you know, where's the camera? I don't want to say that, but um, I don't think that people really understand what someone has to go through in order to, um, you know, uh, pay bills and, and take care of yourself. Um, so that's exactly what I had to do. So Klaus walks by and, 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 and gets very, you know, connected with, with the work. Now, I said to myself, do not even think about it. Don't try to chase him around or, or reach out to him or talk to him. Do not do that. Uh, at least not today. And so, so basically, uh, I think a month or two months went by, and I I transfer to I transfer to uh, to the Upper East Side, Seventy uh, Sixth Street, and and Madison Avenue, and right by the Kokosi Gallery. And this time I see Klaus walking towards uh, one of the restaurants uh, right on 76 in, in Madison Avenue. So I rolled one, one of my works and I went to the restaurant and He kind of looked at me from far away, and I just went to his table, I sat down, and I introduced myself. You know, hello, uh, my name is Serge Mikel. You know, I tried to move on as quick as I could, but it was very uncomfortable. Uh, but I said, uh, Klaus, I really wanted to have this, this work, and and then he says back to me, I cannot, I cannot accept it, thank you. And I said, no, you, you do want this work. And I looked at him straight in the eye. I'm never going to forget it. And, and then he paused for a couple of seconds. And, and then he said, okay, I will take it. And the meeting didn't last too long because I wanted to leave him alone, obviously. And I said, Klaus, thank you so much for this opportunity and you know that we're mm -hmm. So basically, I walked away and I was extremely happy with that encounter, knowing that Klaus listened back 
just got one of my works in his hands. And although it could be framed, maybe it is hidden somewhere in his apartment, but the reality and the actual fact is that Klaus Bissenbeck has one of my works. That, for someone like me, means everything. Um, more than money itself. So as you hopefully can see what I see, but this kind of um, you know this kind of um, master plan that I became very uh, focused on to achieve. It really, really. It was accomplished. Um, and it's very hard for me sometimes to communicate myself or to express what I really, really think. Because you're older and you have been through good and bad experiences and um, that usually is it becomes very normal that you start you start going inwards and your art is the only output that remains. Um, your magnetic field starts changing constantly, mutating constantly. You are, you become a certain entity that is not technically recognized, only conceptually and intellectually uh, recognized. And that is a That is a real catch to um, to in order to function through society. Um, in a very, you know, harmonious way. Uh, so you have to be somehow the better sport. Uh, yeah, you have to become uh, much more uh, understandable uh, of your surroundings. But um, to me, knowing that uh, Klaus Bissenbach has one of my works, uh, it means the world. And I hope that you can relate and, and understand. And the last two images, uh, the image number one is going to be um, uh, the one the, that the uh, art collector uh, bought from me. And then the second piece, image that you guys are going to see is the actual piece that I gave to him at the uh, restaurant. Uh, so I hope that you